Um, okay, so the way we could do this so that we don't die is to uh, remove power from the fan motor first. So we're on a weekend service call here. Ruben's not wearing his proper attire. A Menards shirt? weekend, okay. <laughs> this is one of the more interesting uh, electrical troubleshooting service calls that we've been on. So we've got this fan that's running right now on this air conditioner, but it is off. The contact points right there, you can see how they're not touching. So the contactor's not pulled in, thermostat is off, and uh, then you came and you went to pull yeah. the disconnect well, out. I got it to turn back on. I think it tripped the breaker. So I came out here and this fan blade was spinning the proper direction, but it was clacking really hard. It was hitting on the edge is it, here. Is it spinning the right way right now? It's backwards right now. Okay. So I was like, oh no, I need to pull the disconnect. Okay. And oh, so you pull the disconnect out and only half of it comes out. Yep. And apparently it's the, it's the leg that is the switch leg that comes out. Because if it was the other leg that came out, it might have still shut off just yeah, now. Yeah, it would probably be off, but it's obviously still running with half the disconnect pulled. <laughs> yep. So the reason this fan can keep running like this is that two things, actually. Uh, this contactor right here is a, is a single pole only. It's only switching this right leg. The left leg is continually being powered. There's a 240 volts total coming in here, 120 on each leg. The homeowner said that the, the fan motor had like smoked a little bit at some point. Uh, and then it just started running continuous after that. I told Ruben, I bet the motor has shorted to ground partially to where it's running on 120 volts and using the ground as the neutral. I said, go ahead and clamp your meter around the ground wire and see how many amps you're drawing. So we're drawing 1.73 amps on the ground wire. We should not be drawing any amperage on the ground wire at all. The interesting thing is, if you were to check the other leg, is it hard to switch them? So right there we're drawing low bat. Just kidding. We're drawing 2.37 amps. About half of an amp of electricity is leaking to ground through the frame of this unit and the line set, but most of that power is coming back on the ground wire. So somehow that fan motor is shorted out in a way that allowed it to run on 120 volts. It runs backwards uh, <laughs> when it's off. But once the unit comes on, you said it spins the right direction. Yep, so if I pushed in the contactor right now, which we could, it'll change directions and run the... Yeah, I'm interested to see if it continues to draw amperage on the ground. Okay, so go ahead and push in the contactor. And look, the fan yeah. switches directions. The fan switches in the proper direction, so that's good. It still is sending power back on that ground wire uh, because of that fan motor being bad. The fan motor is leaking power leaking power to ground or to the frame of the unit. Okay. So, this is one re this is a reason why it is imperative that you have a ground wire on your on your air conditioner or any any appliance really in general that has a metal frame. If we cut this ground wire right here, this whole frame of this air conditioner would become energized with 120 volts of power. The only reason that I can touch this and not get electrocuted right now is that that power is being sent back via the ground wire to the uh, electrical panel. Whoa. That's a really big dog. Yeah, it's a bit tall. Hi, puppy. It pees on the air conditioner a lot. <laughs> you can tell, see? Well, <laughs> hi. Um, do you know which breaker it is now that you can turn off down Yep, there? I wrote A, C next to it. Nice, that was a good idea. <laughs> you should see the panel. He said all everything on the whole upstairs is on one breaker and he has to turn it back on every day a couple times. Because it trips. Because it trips. He Sad. said that when they added on, he told the electricians that he thought they probably needed a bigger panel and they're like, no, 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 we'll make it all fit. So they just added a bunch of stuff into the existing panel. Of course they did. Cool. Scary. It's still drawing two amps. I'm scared. Okay, so we've disconnected that ground wire here, so now, uh, theoretically, the body of the air conditioner will become energized, unless there's an alternate path to ground, which might be through this line set through the furnace inside. So we're going to see what that does here momentarily. So we have a new disconnect installed. I'm going to put this in here. I'm kind of afraid. <laughs> Spinning backwards. So I'm going to go from here to. No, I'm just going to pop this cover off here. From the ground to the frame. Very little. So, but we're drawing amperage. My prediction is that the line set is going to be our primary path of return. 
So the line set is connected to the A-coil, which is connected to the duct work, which is connected to the furnace, which is also connected to ground. So therefore it's now using the furnace ground as a return path for the current. So this system is still safe right now. I can still touch this and not get electrocuted because of the line set. So this should be showing us a couple amps here. Whoa. 2.4 amps going back on the line set. That's crazy. So we'll shut that down. But isn't that cool? If somehow the A coil was isolated from the furnace um, electrically, then this all would have become 120 volts and the fan would not have come on because it wouldn't have had an adequate return path to ground. Yep, the fan wouldn't have come on and if you touch this you'd get electrocuted probably. <laughs> it's super rusted on there so it's not gonna probably not gonna be easy. You know what, I think we might want to take this thing off and bring it back to the shop and use the press. It's like, <laughs> that is so scary. <laughs> so now we can get some good penetrating oil on it and then press it out. I don't think I want to press it all the way out this way, so now I'm going to cut it here, flip it over, and then press it down. There. Yep. Mm -hmm. There it is. So this motor is going to be mounted in the upwards direction like this. You'll notice how there's these little rubber plugs that are installed. And you want to make sure that you remove which the plugs on the bottom of the motor. So since this is going to be the bottom of the motor, we're going to take these two black rubber plugs out. Because if you don't pull those plugs out, this motor can actually fill up with condensation over time and eventually kill the motor. Most motors are going to be mounted with the shaft facing down like this and in that case you'd obviously take those plugs out on that side of the motor. Oh, so that's gonna go on there? Wait a minute. Yeah, there's mosquitoes in here. Mm-hmm. The door was open all day. Yeah. Grandpa did. <laughs> grandpa opened it. Yeah. Silly grandpa. <laughs> we got those nuts all tightened down there. So we're ready to now install the fan blade. So what's the important thing that we need to remember here? Uh, which way it needs to face. Which it needs to face this way. <laughs> that actually was not what I was thinking of, but that's also important. <laughs> well, that's, that's the first important thing. <laughs> the second important thing is that these two Allen screws line up with the flat, flat side of the shaft. Yep. How high was it before? Um, it was like about that, that high. Piece of shaft. So it was that distance up? Okay. Yeah. It's pretty close. So as you tighten it, I usually like to center the shaft so that it's for sure facing it, which I think it is. But instead of just cranking them down instantly, you kind of like tighten them until you feel them sort of a little bit stop and then wiggle the shaft in case it's not facing just right. But I think it's good. So we're good. You can kind of let it center itself that way as you tighten it. Yeah, now you're good. And you want to tighten these so that the next guy can't get them out. <laughs> Set the tightness to exactly 10,000 foot pounds. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay. Also so helps if you weld the bead on the bottom where they can't see. Yeah, where they can't see exactly. Now make sure that it spins freely. Does it spin, Havla? Is it ready? Yeah. If the if the shaft is in the way, you can just cut off whatever extra that you have. So we're going to reinstall this in the unit and we'll be good to go.